Good afternoon, United Methodist Church of Wellsboro. Uh, this morning, I wish that I had uh, done this out uh, at the Grand Canyon, but this morning, Steph and I went out to the Grand Canyon. We wanted to see uh, the trees uh, as the sun was rising and to see the beauty of God's creation. Uh, and we were just so blown away because when we arrived, there was this nice fog that was coming down through the valley, and, and it just had just such a beautiful, uh, picturesque view of God's creation in a, in a new and amazing way. And so um, I was just thinking about that this afternoon, or this morning rather, uh, and, and I want to share a passage with us today. This is uh, Psalm 19, 1 through 6. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a, a, set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them. There is nothing hidden from its heat. All throughout passages of scripture, we see how uh, the writers of, of our scripture were experiencing God in creation. Like, first of all, let's remember that we haven't always had scripture. Someone had to write it at some point in time. So before there was scripture, before there was the written word, we were experiencing the living, breathing God in the creation that surrounds us. And there's so there's so much that we can learn about the beauty of God, the power of God, the majesty of God, the wisdom of God when looking at creation. It's important to be connected and to be part of creation. But in that, there's also inherently a responsibility because, because nature reveals to us God's beauty, glory, power, wisdom, presence, creativity, and his loving care. It's our responsibility to take care of this beautiful world so that it can be informative and teaching all of those generations that are to come. It, it brings to mind for me that the words of both uh, St. Francis of Assisi and one of my favorite theologians, Henry Nouwen, both were devoted followers of Jesus. And they expressed their understanding and their love of God by loving the creatures and the creation that God had made for us. We've sing a, a song written by St. Francis often in, uh, in worship in the United Methodist Church, uh, which is all creatures of our God and King. And then I was also reminded today, too, of a meditation that was written by Henry Nouwen on being sisters and brothers of nature. So I want to share those with you too. For St. Francis of Assisi, he was a man that, that left his whole life, left wealth and everything, left everything behind uh, to be a part of God's creation and to share uh, the amazing love of God in new and profound ways by being one with what God had made. And so he wrote this hymn that we sing and I encourage you, uh, as I read these words, to take a moment to meditate on the words that St. Francis offers to us. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thou rushing wind, thou art so strong, ye clouds that sail in heaven along. O oh, praise him, alleluia, thou rising moon in praise, rejoice, ye lights of evening, find a voice. Thou flowing water, pure and clear, make music for thy Lord to hear. O oh, praise him, alleluia. Thou fire so masterful and bright, that givest man both warmth and light. And all ye men of tender heart, forgiving others, take your part. O oh, praise him, alleluia, ye who long pain and suffer bear. Praise God and on him cast your care. Let all things 
their creator bless and worship him in humbleness. Oh, praise him. Hallelujah. Praise, praise the father, praise the son and praise the spirit three in one. St. Francis wrote this in the early 1200s, about 1225. And it speaks to his immense love of God that he experienced in all aspects of his life out in God's creation. And I think that it can inspire us to be encouraged that when we step outside that door, that we are experiencing the living God in the world around us. And then Henry Nowlin offers us this meditation. He says, When we think of oceans and mountains, forests and deserts, trees, plants and animals, the sun, the moon, the stars, and all the galaxy as God's creation, waiting eagerly to be brought into the same glorious freedom as the children of God, we can only stand in awe of God's majesty and God's all-embracing plan of salvation. It is not just we, human beings, who wait for salvation in the midst of our suffering. All of creation groans and moans with us, longing to reach its full freedom. In this way, we are indeed brothers and sisters, not only of all other men and women in the world, but also of all that surrounds us. Yes, we have to love the fields of wheat the snow-capped mountains, the roaring seas, the wild and tame animals, the huge redwoods, and the little daisies. Everything in creation belongs with us to the large family of God. We are blessed. We are blessed to be a part of this world. We're blessed to be a part of God's love. And God came into the world in the form of Jesus to save the world, to love the world, to care for the world, to nurture the world, to not condemn the world, but to love the world. We are all a part of that all-embracing, all-encompassing love of God. Remember that it was not just creation as in humans who groaned and moaned and were longing for freedom. It is all of creation. So take a moment this week. Appreciate all that God has blessed us with and find ways that we can be inherently a blessing in our world too, to continue to, to nurture and to care for and to watch over as God has instructed us to do all the way back to the time of Adam and Eve, to be stewards of this beautiful world, to love it as it loves us in return, to be an active participant in the work that God is doing in the world, and to be connected together with all of God's creation that is around us. Let us pray. Gracious and heavenly Lord, thank you so much for the beauty of your world that we see when we just simply step outside of our doors. We give you thanks for all the birds of the air, the animals of the ground, the fish of the sea, the clean air that we breathe, the beautiful water that we drink, for the life that you have designed to, to nourish us, to uphold us, and for us to be a part of. We give thanks. We ask that you would inspire us to be the best we can be, the best stewards we can be for this world, that it may be enjoyed for years decades, generations to come because it is your creation that we are a part of and it is your creation that you have called us to be the caretakers for. We pray this in your name. Amen. Thank you so much. I hope that you have a blessed day. Go forward today finding what God has in store for you out in this beautiful world. Appreciate every moment and every breath that you take. Don't leave anything on the table. 
but be open to how all of what God can offer us through this beautiful and amazing world. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day, and I will see you all on Sunday.